if you have your Bibles with you this morning, turn to the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 2. We'll read the scripture, then we'll have a word of prayer and, and get into the message. Chapter 2, I want to start in uh, chapter 2, verse 2. Chapter 2, verse 2. Well, let's, might as well get verse 1, amen. <laughs> and in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, wherewith his spirit was troubled, and his sleep break. From him it means that he, he, he wasn't able to get any sleep, it just left him. Verse 2 Then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans, Chaldeans being the Babylonians, for the, to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled. To know the dream. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king in Syrac, O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream, and we will shew thee the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. If you, if you will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation, Therefore, you shall be cut in pieces, and your house shall be made a dunghill. Now, cut in pieces, what he's saying, says you're going to lose your head if you don't tell me the interpretation of this dream. It says a dunghill, that's in the Indian, that's called ohihe tipi. That means an outhouse, okay? So that's what's going to, what your homes is going to, going to turn into. Uh, let me see, where am I at here? Okay, but if, if, you, if you shew the dream and the interpretation thereof, you shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, shew me the dream and the interpretation thereof. They answered again and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will shew the interpretation of it. The king answered and said, I know of a certainty that you would gain the time because you see the thing is gone from me. But if you will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you, for ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me till the time be changed. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I shall know that you can show me the interpretation thereof. He, he's telling them that, that what you want me to do is to tell you what I dreamed then you can make up anything you want to and say this is what, what happened. He said, I'm not going to tell you what I dreamed, but you're going to have to show me or you're going to, you're going to lose your head and, you're, and you're, your habitation is going to be in the dung hill. Okay. Verse 10. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can shew the king's matter. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler, that asketh such things as any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. And it is a rare thing that the king requireth, that it, there is none other that, that can shew it before the king, except the gods who dwelleth is not with flesh. For this cause the king was angry and very furious, and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain, and they sought Daniel and his fellow slain to slain. Now turn back just to one page, probably to chapter one. Now I want to read the first eight verses here to get a little context of what is taking place. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it, okay? So he's taken it over. Now, notice next, verse number two, very important. 
And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into the hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels unto the treasure house of his God. Give my God gave Jehoiakim and the, and the vessels in the house of God to Nebuchadnezzar. Keep that in mind. God did that. It's all in God's plan. You know, sometimes we sometimes we worry about what Joe Biden's going. Let me tell you, Joe Biden is not in charge. God is still sovereign. God is still God is still still the one who makes all the decisions. I don't have to worry about what Joe Biden does as long as I know what God says that he's going to do. Amen? And the king spake unto Asperes, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, of the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge, and understanding science, such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning, the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the, before the king. So they were supposed to eat the king's meat, drink the king's wine for three years, then they would be fit enough to, to stand in the king's presence. But Daniel's not going to have anything to do with that. Verse 6. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Belshazzar. Belshazzar means the Lord protect thee, talking about that. And to Mishael of uh, Meshach gave them the moon god that's the name of a moon god and Azariah of the Abednego that's the name of the, another Babylonian god so they took the names of, from them that God gave them gave them a different name that had to do with the world or in, in, their, in that particular place at that time verse 8 but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Father, we love you. Father, we praise you so much. Father, you are so good to us. Father, we thank you today for the word of God. Thank you for allowing us to, to read your word, to, to study your word. And Father, I pray as we see what happened to each one of these individuals, Father, I pray that we might learn some things that will help us when we go through those difficult times. And Father, I pray today if there's one here that does not know absolutely sure where they're going to spend eternity, I pray that the Holy Spirit of God, which would bring conviction upon their heart, convince them of Jesus Christ, that they might be totally saved, Lord, and have their sin forgiven and have, get eternal life. Lord, help us now in Jesus' precious and holy name I pray. Amen. I mentioned before, the, the pressure of any society or the, where, we, where we congregate, they have the peer pressure, as Brother Bill mentioned, has the peer, peer pressure of, of getting us to do like they do. The military is, is a very good example. Brother Larry, and how many years now, Brother Larry? 32. 32 years, okay? You, you act like a soldier, right? <laughs> yes, right? <laughs> you act like a soldier. You're a soldier. He's been around them for many years. I mean, that's, that's what he does. And when you go in the military, they tell you, forget everything you know, and you're going to be a soldier now. And that's what they expect you to do. When we, when we in society, when I, when, when, when I got a job and I got this particular job, I acted like the rest of everybody there. They had a lot of pressure upon In fact, they will tell you that you need to do this or you need to do this because that's the way we do it. And, and especially Daniel here, 
he, he, was, he was put in a, a, a particular place of no fault of his own. He was, he was captured. He was taken to, to Babylon and, and then put in this particular situation. But he said he purposed in his heart. Now that word purpose means to, to, take, to have a place where you take something and you put it there so that it's readily available to you. So what, what uh, uh, Daniel was saying is that he purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself by eating the king's meat or drinking the king's wine. What he was saying here is this, that thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Psalm 119, 11. So he was saying that what I've been taught the, by, by my mom and by my dad, by, by the, the, the Bible teachers and, and the people around me said, I've been taught something that, that, that the word of God, he said, I've hid that in my heart. My parents taught me to do that. That when the time comes and I am tempted to do this, I am tempted to do that, or I'm tempted to go here or tempted to say this or to watch this. He says, says I've already purposed in my heart that I'm not going to sin against my God. You know, we need to make decisions like that. Amen? Right. I, I remember when I first got saved, Junior and I first got saved, that, that we made a decision that we were going to go to church every time that the, church, the doors were open, unless we were physically not able to go. And when Sunday morning comes for Sunday school, I don't have to decide if I'm going to go to church because I made that 40-some years ago. When Sunday morning comes, I don't have to decide if I'm going to go. Sunday evening, Wednesday night, if they're having a revival or a special meeting, I don't have to decide that. Why? Because I purposed in my heart, Judy purposed in her heart, that when that time came, we were going to go to church. That's what Daniel did. He said, he said because, because I don't want to defile myself, I've been taught that, it, that, 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 that I, I should not do that. I, I'm supposed to eat this and not that. The uh, diet that they had at that particular time and defile him meant that he wasn't allowed to go to the temple and worship God. The same as us. If we have sin, unconfessed sin in our life, we shouldn't be coming into church until we get here and have it confessed. Amen? So he, he purposed in his heart that it's something that he was not going to do. In John 16, 13, the Bible says, Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew thee things to come. So John is telling us in here that the Holy Spirit of God, when you got saved, when I got saved, that the Holy Spirit of God, the things that we have learned, the things that, that, that in Sunday school and in church, what, uh, reading our Bible, uh, uh, vacation Bible school, what are the time from the time you get saved or you get older, that there is things that, that have, you have been taught. The Word of God is hid in your heart and says the Holy Spirit of God, when, when you're tempted to do this, the Holy Spirit of God will bring that passage of Scripture to your mind and that you will know, hey, I shouldn't be doing that. And consequently, we shouldn't. Amen? We don't always do it. I don't always do it. But we should do the things that the Holy Spirit comes to. The, in, uh, in, in Psalm uh, 119.9, remember when we went through Psalm 119? Pastor Jerry said it took 15 years, but it didn't take that long, okay? <laughs> no, it did. Uh, it took about five, so. But uh, it says in, in verse 9 of 119, it says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? I, I wrote down uh, five things that talked about thy word. In verse 11, we looked said that earlier. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Psalm 119, 16. I delight, thy, I delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Verse 17, 119, 17. Deal bountifully with thy servant that I may live and keep thy word. Verse 25, 119. My soul cleaveth unto the dust. Quicken thou me according to thy word. The phrase thy word 
is found 58 times in the Bible. Seven times in the New Testament, 51 times in the Old Testament. 36 of those 51 times is found in Psalm 119. How God's word is so, in, in, in that, that uh, chapter of scripture, how that God's word is so important. And when we, when we studied that, we talked about, talked about falling in love with God and his word, how precious the word of God is. Sometimes we forget that we hold in our hand the very word of God. We have the opportunity to, 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 to read the word, to study to the word, and have the Holy Spirit of God to bring that back to our remembrance. And, and Daniel, as he, as he said, that, 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 that he purposed in his heart that things that happened in his life that he was not going to forget what the word of God had told him and he was able to draw from that area where it was placed in his heart and draw it forward to make it apply to his very life at that particular time. We forget about that sometimes. Sometimes sometime we want to jump in and do something uh, 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 and, and, and the Holy Spirit of God might speak to us but we just kind of let it pass by. We don't, we don't listen to the word of God the way we should, I don't believe. But Daniel did. If you are over a couple days old, you have at times found yourself in what some call between a rock and a hard place. Everybody, anybody ever been there? Sure we have. You take a baby. I mean, three o'clock in the morning, his diaper's dirty, he's hungry, there's only a little light in the room, nobody's around. Brother, he wants out of that bed. What does he do? Ah! That's, that's the only way he knows how to respond, right? But he's between that rock and a hard place, and still, he's between that rock and a hard place, and he, he knows that that, that boy, if I just holler loud enough, somebody's going to come and help me. Huh. <laughs> it's, we have all been in that place. Most of the time, the places that, that I get into, the hard places that I get into, they're usually caused by myself. Uh... I know that's not your problem, but that's mine. <laughs> and most of the time, if, if I cause it by myself, one thing that I want to do is when I'm in that area, I want to get even with ever who put me there. You know, I'm not going to blame it on myself, okay? <laughs> So I want to get even with somebody there. If, if somebody uh, I stand nearby and I think my, my first instinct is, is to, to just hit them hard as I can and, and uh, put that, that'll let me out of that hard place. But it doesn't. Makes it harder to get out. And as we go through this passage of scripture this morning, we're going we're gonna to see from three, individ, three individual peoples Nebuchadnezzar, the Chaldeans, and, and Daniel, how they reacted to the difficult place that they were in. All of us might act, you know, respond differently than, than what uh, uh, the way we should. I, I know most of the time I, I don't uh, respond very well. I remember... One time I was taking my car into, into the garage to get it serviced, okay? And I go in there and I tell the guy, I said, I got an appointment. He says, no, you don't. I said, yes, I do. I called and I got an appointment. He said, no, you don't. So <clears throat> I let him hear some choice words that I had uh, <clears throat> learned and uh, I told him that, and I got in my car and left. I went around the block, and drove back in there. 
I went in there to apologize to the guy because I shouldn't have handled it that way. But, but sometimes, sometimes just situations, situations happen in our life that, well, you're right, I mean, you're squeezed. You can't go this way, you can't go that way. Uh, the Apostle Paul said that in 2 Corinthians uh, 4.8. He says, we are troubled on every side. That word trouble talks about a narrow thong, suffer tribulation, trouble, a rock and a hard place. He said, on this side I got trouble, on this side I got trouble, on this side I got trouble, and behind me I got trouble. Rock and a hard place. You can't go here, you can't go there. But you know what the next thing he says? He says, not distressed. He said, we've got trouble on every side, but we're not distressed. And you know what that word distress means? To him in closely. He says, I've got trouble on every side. He says, but I'm not distressed. I'm, I'm really not, I'm really not, 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 not so close to, to me that, 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 that I'm distressed about it. And as I, I was thinking about, you know how he could say that? And every, everything he goes through here, he says, not this way. He knew in his journey upon this life, he knew where he was going. He knew that things were going to happen. He knew that God had promised him that he would go to Rome. Amen? You remember that? He promised him that he would make it all the way to Rome. But he had another promise. He promised that he'd get him all the way to heaven. And sometimes if, if when, when, we get in, when we get in those hard places, we forget. We forget what God has promised us. Hey, that I'm not going to stay here. I will guarantee you that I'm going to get out of here because my God has promised me that he will get me all the way to glory and absolutely nothing can keep that from happening. Absolutely nothing. I'm going to make it. You're going to make it. I don't have to worry about Joe Biden. I don't have to worry about that he can't remember anything. I don't worry about uh, what he says or where he goes or where he don't go. My God is able to keep every promise that he has made to his children. And I can thank God for the grace of God, for the mercy of God, that, that this hard place that I'm in right now, it's only temporary. Only temporary. And God's going to get us through. God's going to take us all the way through. He went on to say, says, uh, we are perplexed to be without a way. He says, we're perplexed. There's no way out. When he says that, okay? But keep in mind, he knows something. He knows something and he's going to remember that. He says, but not in despair. That word despair means to be utterly without a way. He says, that's not me. That's not me. I'm not utterly without a way. I know where I'm going. I know what God has promised me. So we're going to keep on going. He says he was uh, persecuted. To persecute means to put to fight, drive away, to pursue. Whence the meaning means to persecute. But he says, not forsaken not forsaken to leave to leave behind he said god hasn't forgot about me i, I might be persecuted i might i might be pursued they're trying to get me he says but my god he hasn't forgot about me. aren't you glad of that promise of god let your heart not be worried but almighty god has, has a promise for you that he's going to one of these days, that trumpet's going to sound and praise God, every child of God's going to go to glory. I'm, I'm thankful for that today. Cast down, I mean to throw down, but not destroyed, to destroy utterly. He said that hasn't happened yet. The Bible says, behold, I go forward, but he is not there. Job is talking about this. Job found himself in a hard place. Amen. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there. And backwards, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he, where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. 
He hideth himself on the right hand that I cannot see him. Don't you love this verse? Verse 10. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, God knows every step of your journey till you get all the way to glory. You say, I'm, 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 not, a, uh, I'm not one of those fellows that falls down the stairs and says, I'm glad that's over. But God knows everything in your life. Is appointed unto man once to die. God knows the time. God, nothing's going to happen to you until God wants it to happen. We have that promise from God. He says, when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. My foot hath held his steps. Psalm 119, 105. Thy lamp is a light unto my feet that I can see every step that I take through the word of God and a lamp unto my path that God even gives us a lamp that he, we can see a little bit further down the road. Every step that we take, every path that we take, God's word lights it up that I can go down that way. His way have I kept and not declined. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. That's Job 23, 8 through 12. In the chapter that we're reading this morning, here in chapter 2, we see the character of each one of these Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the Chaldeans, and Daniel, and Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. We see... We see how they handled the difficulty that they went. And keep in mind, Nebuchadnezzar's problem was his dream. But how he handled that dream put the rest of these, the Chaldeans and Daniel and his three friends, they, he put them in a hard place. Because he was going to cut off their head if, if they didn't able to tell him the interpretation of the dream. But he, but he throws a little a little uh, uh, stick in the, sp in, the, in the spokes, if you please, that he's not going to tell them the dream that he had. You say, well, why don't you do that? I, d I don't know if, if he forgot the dream because the Bible says the dream troubled him. So he must have remembered some of it to be troubled. I don't know if he forgot the dream or if he was just trying to see how, how, how truthful that these Chaldeans and the astrologers uh, how, how truthful they were or as he stays in there or they would just, if, they, if you could tell them something that, that I fell down the steps and, and landed in a, in a pool of oil, then they would make up some kind of story because they know what happened or what you dreamed. So now they can say, well, the reason you fell down the stairs is because somebody put a, a, a rope across there and the reason you fell in that oil, guy's uh, oil pan leaked there two days before and, and that's where you fell, Okay. He don't know the difference if he told him what happened. But if he didn't tell him how the dream occurred, he would know if they're telling the truth or not. So, the conduct of Nebuchadnezzar reveals exactly how evil and how, how power can destroy an individual or a nation. Selfish. Brother Bill mentioned that this morning too. Talking about selfishness. And selflessness. The charge to this Nebuchadnezzar, he had, he had, he had all of all of uh, Babylon. Plus, God had given him these uh, to besiege Jerusalem, Judah, and 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 to to take these uh, uh, very young men. And, and put them in captivity and try to change them to, to act the way that, that uh, uh, they, they should act as Babylonians. So, 
And, and the, the uh, request that he made, unread, how would anybody be able to tell you the dream if you didn't tell them what it was? No, nobody without supernatural power, amen? So nobody was able, to, none of them was able to do it. Man, I got to hurry here, okay? Okay, so it was unreasonable, it is cruel, uh, suicidal. The conduct of the Chaldeans exposed the weakness of the pretension to be matched by when they when he gave them the, the possibility to that you had to show them it showed just how much they 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 was pretending to know in magical powers that that but they did not have any supernatural power and they wasn't able to do what 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 Nebuchadnezzar asked them to do. Uh, there no practical interest. Uh, uh, instead of increasing religious, it discouraged it religion. Then, get to Daniel here. Daniel exhibits the excellency of devout wisdom under severe trial. Wisdom. The Bible tells us in James 1, 5, If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. I, I love that passage of Scripture. When you was in school, you know, I, I never raised my hand because I thought if I answered the question wrong, I'm going to say, well, you dummy, you shouldn't raise your hand to start with. God just didn't raise my hand. But the Bible says that if I raise my hand and ask for wisdom, God said he upbraideth not. He's not going to scold me for, for asking for wisdom. And he says he gives it a word that, that most of us don't like, but here in this context it's good, liberal. Amen? So, so we, can, we can say here that, 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 that God will give wisdom to anyone that asks him. Talking about a saved person. If you're saved and you ask God for wisdom, God says that he will give it to you. Doesn't, he doesn't make any bones. You don't have to do this to get it. You don't have to do this to get it. You don't have to do this to get it. It says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Problem is, most of us think we're pretty wise. And we don't want to ask. We want to try to do it on our own. But not Daniel. Daniel decided that he was going to do that. When things are hopeless, someone said, pray. When things are darkest, pray. When you have no idea what is to do next, pray. Well, what a wise decision that Daniel, he's going to get his friends. He's going to warn them. But more importantly, they're going to have a prayer meeting. They're going to get together and they're going to pray. They're going to pray for God to do something in their life that would affect affect that whole nation. In fact, the whole world. Daniel's friend needed, needed to be warned. He warns him. Plead for mercy from the God of heaven. This is what he's going to pray. The text doesn't tell us exactly how they prayed, if they prayed together, but I believe they did. We're not told what they said, but the motive is not hidden. Dan, Dan, Daniel said, fellas, we're going to die. We're going to lose our head. He's going to cut us to pieces if we do not Ask God to give us the light here. And praise God. He didn't ask God. said, God, just let us escape. He didn't ask him that. He said, God, give me light enough that I can interpret the scripture. I can interpret his dream. Let me know what the dream is so that, that I, can, I can go to him and I can, I can tell him not only what his dream was, but I can tell him what it means. What, how, that's, you know, a lot of times we pray Selfishly, maybe I'm the only one who does that. Uh, but uh, we pray selfishly sometimes that uh, I want, I want, I, I, I want, uh, Lord, uh, I want. Uh, Daniel didn't pray that way. He prayed for wisdom and God gave him wisdom. We hear so much about the intercession that sometimes we feel a little guilty praying for ourselves. But in this case, that's exactly what, what Daniel needed to ask God to do something. They started to pray. They didn't stop until God answered their prayers. His three friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, got together. They had a prayer meeting. I know in my own life, deep valleys will call you to 
to your knees. I, I'm sure if I went around the room and says, do you remember a time when you were in that rock in a hard place that the only place you could go was on your knees and, and weep and cry out to God? That's the only place you could go. You had to go there. And God answered that prayer. Daniel did that. He knew that, that, that he had been that before. This wasn't his first time that this was going to happen. In the Bible says in Acts 2.1, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Acts 12, 5. Peter therefore is kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing to the church unto God for him. Acts 12, 12. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. Matthew 18, 20. For, there, for two or more are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. In Matthew again, 30, verse 30. And but when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried saying, Lord, save me. One of the shortest prayers in the Bible perhaps. But, but when, when Daniel knew what, and, and his three friends knew, knew what, what they had to ask God for, the, he wanted wisdom that he could do what, what God would, 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 or what Nebuchadnezzar required of him doing at that particular time. Devout wisdom finds great strength in the greatest trials. When, you, when you're in the worst place that you think that, but, but I, I, I'm, I'm just not going to get out of this. Unless God intervenes and asks God for wisdom. Boy, and when that time comes, the next time you're there, you say, boy, Lord, I, I remember when you did this. I remember, Lord, how you handled this in my life. I, when I was with the Indians, South Dakota, I had a place on the front pew that was black where I used to get down on my knees and pray and cry for for things that were happening. Hard places. But boy, God always, always comes through. And the, 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 when the darkest, the light of God always comes through. It had, it had not been for the king's savage threat. It might, not have, might have taken da Daniel years and years till he come to this place in his life. So it's actually a blessing. Hebrews 13.6, you knew I was going to get that, Kelly. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Isn't that an amazing verse? That all my, what man has, the, all of the mandates that, that uh, the president has made. I heard, I heard yesterday on the news, Brother Larry, that 60,000 National Guard and Reserve are losing their pay and their benefits because they will not take the shot. That's what power does. Our God is all powerful. Our God can override no matter, no matter what they say. Our God is going to get us all the way home. Yes, sometimes it might be difficult. But our God is able to do what our God says that he could. If you're a child of God today, you can, you can take this to the bank that every promise that God has made to you, he, he, you, can, you can count on that, that he will get you all the way to glory one, of, one way or another, the upper taker or the undertaker. But God's going to get you all the way to glory. Thank God for that. The greatest uh, excellently in their capacity to shine brightest on the hardest trials. Job said that you can come forth as gold. Trials get rid of the dross. When they, when they smelt gold and silver, they will do that time and time again. You do it one time and you have a little bit of dross on there. It's cloudy. Do it again, a little bit clear. They do it until the, the forger can look in that, in that pot of gold or that pot of silver and see his reflection. When he can see his reflection, he knows that, that that gold is pure. One of these days, the Bible says that we shall be like him, for we see him as he is. God's still working on me. God's still working on you. 
He, he takes a little bit of that dross out. We go through these hard spots. Takes a little bit of that dross off. We come out better on the other side. We've got a little bit more of Jesus in us. We've got all of Jesus. But the people can see Jesus in us a little bit clearer. One of these days, we're going to, he's going to be able to see Jesus in us completely. When we get to glory. But until that time, there's hard places. When you get through them, when you're in there, remember. God's promises. Ask for wisdom and God will give it to you. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. Praise you and thank you for all that you do. Father, I pray today this invitation. Father, I pray, I know there's folks in here going through a very difficult time. We all do. But Father, they're in it right now. God, they need your help. Father, I pray that they would ask for wisdom. Lord, and remember all that you've done. You haven't forsaken us. You're still right there with us. Father, help us. Help us to pray, Lord, for wisdom. In Jesus' precious and holy name I pray. Amen.